and no business or institution of higher education wants to recruit people who melt into pretty little snowflake puddles when they see a rainbow flag. Conservatives might succeed in using culture wars wedge issues to rally their base and win elections, but they always lose the culture wars. Why? The answer is stunning, because they've already lost. That's right. By the time conservative culture warriors, like many of you here today, pick up an issue, it's already a lost cause. You're fighting for a world that is gone. You're fighting for a world that is already lost. You are fighting, in fact, because you know that what you are accustomed to, in this case, a society that commits to the project of failing to provide an inclusive environment for LGBTQ people, is already yesterday's news but I received a powerful email that I would like to read instead. It's from Talia Zimak Bursin, a 2003 CBUS student and current professor at Yale's Education Studies Program. There's a wonderful book by a religious studies professor called Why Liberals Win the Culture Wars Even When They Lose Elections. The thesis, thesis of this book is simple. Conservatives might succeed in using culture wars wedge issues to rally their base and win elections, but they always lose the culture wars. Why? The answer is stunning, because they've already lost. You cannot turn back the clock. Don't take me wrong, there's a great deal you can do. You can methodically weaken the academic and mental health outcomes for your students. You can conspire to increase suicide rates of an already very vulnerable population. You can even conspire, as you apparently wish to, to dismantle the faith Americans hold in public education and turn school board meetings into an embarrassing circus. But you just cannot turn back the clock. You've already lost. Today, young people of all gender and sexual identities grow up knowing that they can legally marry. Today, young people can flip on any streaming device of their choice and find affirming, joy-centered television featuring gay characters. Today, young people can hop on Instagram and TikTok and find whatever proudly queer content they like. Sure, ban books from the library, but have you ever met the internet? LGBTQ role models abound. Heck, the most popular self-help podcast for American moms is hosted by a lesbian couple. Once in high school, I remember a teacher saying that gay people were rampant in ancient Rome. He didn't mean that in a positive sense, but I do. Wonderful, successful gay people are rampant today in government, in music, in sports, in Hollywood, in law, in business, in education, in literally every sector you can imagine. Rainbow flags might not be in your classrooms after tonight, but they are just about everywhere else. And no business or institution of higher education wants to recruit people who melt into pretty little snowflake puddles when they see a rainbow flag. They want people who can cooperate and succeed in affirming diverse environments. To those here prepared to support Policy 321, even if you win tonight, you've already lost the war. The world moved on from your bigoted fear of gay kids many years ago. This tonight is the last gasp of a sad lost cause. A better world awaits, and so does another school board election which I look forward to participating in. That's my part.